Okay, welcome back. Uh, so we're going to start building a guitar. And I thought I'd start with the neck. Because the first thing everybody asks me when I, they say, where did you get the neck? Did you make the neck? H how do you make a neck? Uh, they're, more cons uh, they're also very uh, surprised that I did the fret work. So it's not that hard, and I'm going to show you how to do it. So we begin. We need a few tools, a saw. I always use this miter saw as well. A T-square, a pencil. That's basically what we're going to use to start with. So I have this piece of wood I'm going to use. You might think, well, that's a long neck, but this is going to be through the body. So I'm going to laminate the sides on and carve after that. So we have to figure out exactly where we need to cut to make this work. You're going to need a tape measure. Figure out the overall length of your guitar from the bottom of the body um, until where the neck starts to curve back for the uh, peg, pegs or the uh, tuners, if you will. The hockey stick. Okay, so we're going to measure where we're going to cut the angle for the... Now you always want to leave yourself a little bit of overage. You can always take it off. You can subtract wood, adding wood, you can do it, but it's a half. So just to show you what I mean here, we're going to cut the wood where this begins. So we want the length of the guitar to here. And it's exactly 32, but we're going to give it an inch at least, maybe a little more. Go 33 and a half. T square. This wood is being factory uh, milled at the where I bought it, so it's nice and um, straight everywhere. So I can use the T square to draw a line at 33 and a half. Um, but I gotta check one other thing because I need the rest of this wood for other stuff. So. As I said, this is going to be a through the body, so I'm going to need a piece of this wood to add to this so that it will make up the thickness of the body. And this is about... say 19 inches. So, I have to account for 19 inches off of this end. And that goes there. And this piece, which will make up the back of the hockey stick, has to be at least seven inches long. And we got seven and three quarters, so that's perfect. Now what you do is, you can have your angle sharper if you want it. You make it a shorter uh, box. We're going to draw three inches from here for a short, a steeper angle. I like it a little shallow, so I'm going to go three and a half inches. And I'm going to draw another line here. So we've drawn one line here and another line three and a half inches back. Put the piece of wood on its end and trace those lines back here. So 33 and a half. And 37, I guess. 37. Math on the fly. I hate that. Oh, 35, 36, 37. Yeah. So now we have two lines here, and we're going to draw a straight line from the front edge of this line to the back edge of this line. That's going to make our neck angle. Now, you're going to want to do, draw these lines around to this side, because you're going to cut this with a handsaw. And 
You want to see how close you are to the line. Try and keep it as straight as possible. That just means less planing later on. Okay. So we're going to cut this off to make this easier to work with. And we're going to glue it back on later in a different place. So you always want to, when you're cutting something, especially you want it to be straight, you need to secure your work. So that's another thing you're going to need to get if you don't already have. You're going to need clamps and as many as you can afford. Just about. All right. Miter box, miter saw. And just always double check that you got the right line, you're cutting the right thing. Side. So now we have our lines drawn and we're going to cut this on an angle and sometimes it works out really well, sometimes not so good, but you're going to fix any problems that may arise and that's why we're leaving a little bit of extra wood to work around. So you just follow that line. And I'm going, I'm favoring that side, uh, favoring this side actually, giving a little more wood on this side. I have a little more room to play with on that side, so. Let's start cutting along. The hardest part is getting started, of course, in most journeys. tools, you know, people say they've tried using a plane and it's really hard and it's just a matter of getting used to it and allowing the, the tool to do the work. You're just guiding it, basically. I'm just going to move this a little bit. He's trying to keep an eye and make sure you're going down as straight as possible. Again, if you don't, that's okay. We can fix that. This thing used to be attached to the wall. Another project, fixing the bench. See that? See, that's not very straight. That's all right. So now we have this uneven end, and what happens with this? It's going to go on like that. And that's going to give you neck angle or your hockey stick. First, we have to flatten that out. Next tool in your repertoire will be a plane. This is a block plane. This you want to be sharp. And if you've never used a plane, you might want to practice a little bit. But the whole trick to using the plane is making sure that it's sharp. And again, it's going to do all the work. This stuff is nice for planing. The 
plane does all the work. You can feel the high spots. Once you get used to it, how the plane feels on the wood, you know, you know, notice that it knows exactly what it wants to do. You just have to guide it there. Nice, a um, lot easier than working with maple in this situation. I have this little baby plane. It's a Stanley plane. <laughs> when it works, it works really well. It's probably one of my favorite tools here. Nice and straight when you lose another pencil. Here we go. When you can draw a line right close to that edge. And it's getting pretty straight there where I'm planing. Okay. So now it's pretty straight, but there's a few little high spots. Let me demonstrate. Scraper plane, another wonderful yet simple tool. This is just a sharpened piece of steel, basically. It's not even really sharpened. You just file it flat, and you have a nice little burr. And with that burr, you're able to really flatten this out. And there are sh shaped ones, so you can do contours. And you can buy a set of scraper planes. For like $20, you get a bag of like 10 different sizes. And so now we're even closer, and now I'm going to cheat. I'm going to use a sandpaper block on an old piece of countertop. Can you see that? As soon as I do that, I can see where the high points are. Where do you want? Chalk. Chalk. So you can take some chalk, rough up the area, and this way you can see exactly what's going on here. So we may have to make all that chalk go away. Okay, so now I'm finished sanding that smooth, and I'm going to show you. We're pretty close to that line there. As long as it's nice and good in the middle, because that's going to actually be cut away eventually, part of that. So now we need to attach this to this. And we're going to just check it. <laughs> Make sure this is good and flat. Check that this is, looks like it's sealing good when you squish it, should. Yeah, I don't see a seam there. So we're good to glue. Now, you see the line here is back here. So we, we have this much room to play with here. And when we attach this, we have to make sure that this top part is going to be flat. So that you can put a veneer on top of it. It's going to hide that seam. You're going to put a nice veneer on there and put your pegs in. So we have some planing to do here and we're going to match that to this. So you can do it now, maybe get it close a little bit. And 
and it doesn't have to be perfect. We're going to sort that out later. So now we're going to glue this on here, and then you're going to have your neck ready to work on. Okay. So let me flatten this out a little bit, so it's going to be easier to work with later, but you still have to make sure that when you plane this off, you're going to have wood here along this line where the two edges meet. So you shoot over a little bit. Depends on how confident you are about getting that flat later. You uh, can compensate a little bit more, but you don't want to do too much. So we're going to glue it. And we needed, I said, wax paper. I, don't, I can't find the wax paper. So we <laughs> use the plastic. It's a piece of plastic, and it should be uh, flat so that we're going to get this to be nice and straight by it's going to be nice and straight because it's on a nice flat surface and we're going to clamp it in many different ways as you'll find out. So when you put glue on here and you try and clamp it just like this, this is going to slide away. It's going to slide out. So you need to secure everything in place. So we start by putting a block at the far end. You can use a scrap piece of wood like that. Stop the back from sliding away. And then we're going to want this close to the edge so we can clamp it to the table. And we need a block here. This is bits of fur left over from the heart guitar. And that's good. So this is sticking out a little bit because that's all going to go away later. That right where you want it to glue. Now you set up your other clamps. Say we need one here to keep this flush there. Might need one here, so we'll have that ready. I just have to get a couple more clamps. All right, so now we have clamps. These are actually bridge clamps. So when you want to glue the bridge onto the guitar, this goes in here like this. And glues your but they're not limited to that. So we're going to use one couple here to get the lower high side of that. So it looks good. Now we can take it apart and put the glue on. It's good to have some sort of knife, old knife, to use with the glue. The pages, carpenter's glue. And so you're really supposed to put glue on both surfaces so that it starts to soak in when it's nice and wet. Um, otherwise you can get a gl dry glue joint on one side. So we can do this so we know where to put the glue. It's going to go down to here. Don't be shy. With the glue, it'll come out if it doesn't want to be there. Yeah, that's nice and flush, so we should have a nice straight neck when we're done. And you want to put quite a bit of pressure. And let that dry, probably 24 hours. Is good. It doesn't have to be. If you really want to work on it, you could go back in four hours and be good to go. But I'm going to leave it overnight. And that's the neck. Maybe took, uh, what, an hour maybe? Less than an hour? So yeah, maybe 45 minutes. And uh, that's one step done.